Now that you've got your Star Seeker 4 set up and ready to go, how do you actually use it to find things in the night sky? So we're going to show you how the computer system works and do an init a, a fake, because it's daytime, a fake two-star alignment just to show you how the system works and how to get it up and running. This procedure works for all of our Star Seeker 4 lines. So if you have the 114 millimeter reflector or the long 80 millimeter refractor, the procedure is identical to either of, uh, all of the units in this line. All right, well, let's get started. So the first thing you do, turn it on, the little power button on the side. I've already got eight AA batteries in the compartment on the side. Your hand controller will say initializing. Give it a second and it will power up to the uh, version number. Hit enter after that, it'll tell you uh, never to uh, look directly at the sun without a proper solar filter, that's very important. Uh, you can absolutely look at the sun, just make sure you buy a filter that fits over the front and it's a nice snug fit, uh, and then you can see some very nice details on the sun. Now it asks you to set your location on Earth, your longitude and latitude. Uh, if you've got a smartphone, uh, it most likely is going to be in the compass setting, or in the compass app included with the phone. Uh, here with my phone, it's telling me, okay, so it's asking first for the longitude. So I'm in the Western Hemisphere, so it's always west. Hit enter, and arrow over to the longitude, and I'm going to look on my phone, and it says I'm at 121 degrees and 50 minutes. And that's, I verified again that I'm west, not east. If you're uh, in the Western Hemisphere, make sure it says west, not east. Hit enter, then it goes to the latitude, north or south. So in the northern hemisphere, make sure obviously it's north. And then go to your latitude setting. I'm at 36 degrees. And enter the minutes. All right, hit enter. And then the time zone. Here in the uh, uh, west coast, uh, we're in Pacific uh, minus eight uh, time zone. So negative, make sure if you're um, in the western hemisphere it's negative, in the eastern hemisphere it's positive. So negative, and I mouse or I arrow over to the time, and we're at 0, 08 offset. Hit enter. The date, enter your date accurately. Enter again. The time, so again, look at your phone. Uh, it doesn't have to be dead on accurate, you just have to um, just look at your watch. It doesn't have to be atomic time, no problem there. Just after noon. Obviously, I'm doing a fake alignment here because we're during the day, but uh, uh, this will give you an idea of how to set the telescope up when it comes time to do it at night. Daylight savings time. Make sure you're accurate here. Um, right now, we're, we just passed daylight savings time, so we are in daylight savings. That's yes. During the winter months, make sure you change that to no because you'll be 15 degrees off if you don't set that correct because we're an hour off either way. Begin alignment, yes or no. Okay, so here you're ready to start the alignment procedure. So there's two methods, either brightest star or two star align. I like the two star line. I think it's the easiest, so I'm going to stick with that one uh, for the purposes of showing you how to align this. So two star line, hit enter. It's going to suggest a bunch of different stars, and you can use the arrow buttons down here, the up and down scroll buttons, not the uh, movement buttons, but the up and down scroll here, to scroll through the list of stars. Uh, find one that's nice and bright that you can identify in the sky. Uh, here's the trick with that. If you're not sure, if you're just starting out and you're not really sure where uh, these stars are, look up and find a nice bright one. And there are some apps on your phone. Uh, I've got an iPhone and we have an app on the, uh, on the App Store called Starseek. Well, that's a great one for this type of, of work. You just hold the phone up and it will update the screen with exactly what you're pointing at. So there's a nice bright star right there. That's Vega. Say. So you've just identified your first star. So um, if you don't have an iPhone, there are other uh, uh, apps on your your app store that will do the same thing. So use it to identify a bright star. I'm going to go back to Vega because that was a nice bright one. Hit enter. Now it's telling me to point the scope manually at Vega. So for the first star, you manually move the telescope around using the arrow buttons. So I'm just going to pretend that I'm on Vega right there. And notice when I move the buttons, it's nice and fast. It moves very quickly. Get it centered in your finder scope. It might be a little too hard to center it in the eyepiece because it's moving so fast, it zips right by. But this is the first stage, so just get it in the finder scope. Hit enter. Now it says center to the eyepiece. Now when you press the buttons, it actually looks like nothing's happening. But if you look through the eyepiece, it's just moving a lot slower. So it helps slow things down and get it centered in the eyepiece. So now I'm just going to pretend I'm looking for Vega and I'm centering it up right there. You might want to use a crosshair eyepiece. Uh, to get a dead center, because the more accurate you are here, obviously, the better 
pointing uh, positioning the telescope is going to have later on. So, okay, I'm set. It's Vega centered in the eyepiece. Hit enter. Now it asks me for a second star. And again, you can go through a list of, of stars here. The difference is now it's got a starting point, so it knows where most of these stars are, more or less. So let's pick, uh, it's asking for Capella. So I'll pick Capella. I'll hit enter. It's going to go to where it thinks Capella is. And depending on how level the tripod was and how accurate that first alignment star is, um, it'll be somewhere close to Capella, but it's not going to be in the eyepiece. So let's just wait for this to go around. Okay. And it does uh, an iteration of a fast slew, and then it slows down and it gets it centered. Okay, so now it's asking center Capella to the eyepiece. So now I'm going to do the same thing up, down, left, and right. If it's not very close and these buttons are moving too slow, you can always hit the rate button, rate, and then change the speed from one through nine. You can go up to nine if you want to really slew around fast to get it centered. But I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I'm going to just pretend that it's just a little bit off. I'm going to center it here, get it right in the middle of your eyepiece. If you're using, again, that crosshair, even better. Hit enter. Alignment successful. All right, you're ready to go. Now it knows where things are in the sky. It knows which way things are moving. And um, you can use the, the hand controller to find all those objects in the night sky. So let's just, uh, for instance, go to some object. Let's say I want to do Messier. So I go out to the main menu, and I hit number four button, which is M, Messier. And then I want to do an object. So uh, I initially sent it on Vega. So near Vega is the Ring Nebula. That's M57. So I hit M57, Enter. And then it asks, do you want to go to that object, view object? Yes. And it'll go right back to it. And it's going to be nearby where Vega was, which was somewhere over here. So obviously, it's going in the right direction. And we're going to be looking at Vega if it was night right now. <laughs> All right, so there you have it, a very simple way to align the telescope, get it working and up and running so you can view objects in the night sky. Thank you very much. Clear skies.